it's Danger Devs and Ryan and we're in Gateshead but today we're going to Beamish Museum. Hey guys it's Danger Devs and we're in Gateshead which is next to Newcastle. Today we're heading off to Beamish but before we go let me tell you why we are in Gateshead. We are in Gateshead because Ryan is letting me meet all his cousins, well one of them, and all his grandparents and I met them all yesterday. They were so lovely. Um, they looked after us so well. I mean, we're, we're staying in their, in the, his grandparents' house for a few days. His other grandparents are very nice. I loved hearing the stories from his granddad on his dad's side. He has stories from before I was born about him being like a soldier or working in a van or just being a little boy or meeting men that are good men, good, good men. I <laughs> it's been really lovely. They have fed us. They have looked after us very well. Uh, let us use the Wi-Fi. I, I, it's been very pleasure meeting the grandparents. Uh, cousin, the auntie, Orion, very nice. Can't wait to see him again. I really can't wait to see everybody again. This is totally a different way of networking. I had to know everybody's name. I had to know how these people are related to Ryan. Okay, you're the cousin, you're the grandparents, you're Ryan's dad's dad, you're Ryan's mum's mum. Okay, I got I got it. I met so many people in one day, which was yesterday, grandparents, your grandparents, auntie, cousin, uncle, of oh, all oh, Ryan. It was really good. Meeting them all, I cannot wait to see them again. It's been so good. Anyway, stop talking. I'm here on be mission now with Brian, which is a museum back from 1820 all the way up to the start of World War One. To you, which way do you want to go? Do you want to wait for the tram, which you'll have to wait for all these school kids to get out of the way? Or, or do you want to go left walk? or right? Or do you just want to walk. <laughs> Might as well go walking yeah, walk to the in, right. Walking for now. Yeah. Might as well. Excellent. So I bet all these school kids are going to go on the tram. That's the way we go anyway, because that's the. Uh, the way we go, we go. Okay. 1920s over here, and there's 1900s and 1900s. So that's the way we're going. Right. That way for now. 1825. Wow, we've gone back in time. Church. You know how you can recognise it's a church? Because <laughs> it looks like a church. It doesn't look like an old factory. <laughs> doesn't it? It looks like a church. My church was a factory. It got turned exactly. into one. This, but that doesn't look like a church. It just looks like a hall. This was like a church. Preacher's room. Mm -hmm. There's not even a Bible in here. Why would there be? It's a church! Why would, he, why would the preacher leave his Bible here? He'd take a home. Why not? Or he would lock it away. There's a lot of Bibles. Yeah, or he would lock it away somewhere. Like in the bookcase. Yeah. <laughs> There's numbers on the wall. Yes, there is. Do you want to guess why that was? Why? There's numbers on the wall. Uh, Have a guess. Have a guess. See if, see if How many guess. days he lived here? Nope. Then what? This church did not used to be here. Oh. They moved it. Okay. So, if you were going to move something... You need the bricks? You'd number the bricks so you know what order to put them back in. Ah. Uh. See, 45, 46 is next to each other. 61, 62, 63, 64. 167. Exactly. Ah. All, all the bricks have been numbered so they know exactly where they were going. That explains so much. <laughs> She's tiny. Thank you, Ryan. That is so cute. Always oh, looking for it. I want this to come back. I enjoy filming that. Oh, it's back. 
Not the rat, the horse. Oh, she was brilliant. Oh. To be tenant here, because you're talking about 400 pounds a year. Mm. In modern terms, that's somewhere between 10 and 100 grand. Yeah. Mm. A year. A year. Mm. To be fair, I don't think if you can buy today's standards, that's a horrendously bad deal. Because no. nope. he mm. gets this fantastic house. <laughs> All right, back then, there was no such thing yeah. as furnishing. When you rented it, it was literally the shell. Yeah. <laughs> you'd get the shell, you'd get the roof. You didn't even get windows. <laughs> Those were your own concern when you were a tenant. So all the decoration, all the furnishings, all the practical equipment, the windows, all him. That's all the farmer. This is how far I'm going. Come in and have a look. No, I hate stuffed animals. I couldn't go in there. No. Why not? It's disgusting in there. Staying out of the kitchen. Is that you would have turned you? Yeah, you yeah. Hmm. Chair legs, table legs, spindles. So what it is is <laughs> and then Well essentially the basis for what we use nowadays is just a bit Low tech. <laughs> well, nowadays it goes. Yeah, obviously, it spins a lot so faster, right. but it's yeah, the same it principle. It goes all the way around now. Yeah. With mm. this one, you go down, down, and back so up. You're yeah. just doing it on the downward. Uh huh. But yeah, it is the same, same principle, just yeah. updated. Yeah. Yeah, these been around since at least the Viking times. So just, yeah. As well, you wouldn't be in the shed like this. You'd be out in the woods doing this. Yeah. But mm. With our weather. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have your um, your bodger and your turner? So the bodger would have got the wood ready, prepared yeah. it, mm -hmm. give it to the turner, then would turn whatever he was making. Fantastic. Hmm. Yeah, because they travel around, so you know, someone would say, oh, can you fix me a chair, or you know, <laughs> whatever you're making, yeah. turning, yeah. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Do they get you making anything here, or is it just a bit of demonstration? I do a demonstration like that, but I make you know, spoons or mm. milking stools or... Bees and doing that all day long. Yeah, what's absolutely. Your, absolutely. What's your favourite one to make? Spoons. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't make a spoon. Just sit there and just relax and you know, just. Mm. Um, I did. Uh, I did some uh, whittling because I, I had a wee um, part-time job one year, and I did a bit of bit of whittling, and that, yeah. that was good fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's quite relaxing, you know. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. Just sit and just. <laughs> hasn't got me any particular. Talking about things. Yeah, I am just walk. Well, I want to learn stuff and chat and enjoy myself. I feel like I'm on a school trip then. Oh, good. Maybe you'll learn something. <laughs> school was like five years ago, dear. I know. It's, every day is a school day. I always learn something new. So time, time you did. <laughs> <laughs> I learn something new every day, but not in the school. You're not in, in a school, you're in a college you're or in a, you're in a historical work. village. Let's learn some stuff about the historic stuff. I've learned to not lie down or else I may look dead. Correct. No, not look dead, be dead. Well back in that time, yes. yes. Hmm. Uh, I don't know what else I've learned. Well, you've learned that they used wood in the fires because they would cook the food on that and they would smoke their hams upstairs so they couldn't use coal but then later on when they started using coal everything they didn't need to cook because you could just go down the shop and get stuff you also learned that um, they had a big grain silo in the house but after they'd sowed the fields they didn't need that so they dismantled it and turned it into beds the guy paid 400 pounds a year which was equivalent to like a month that we pay no, back then, £400 was about between £10,000 and £100,000. That's how much that was worth. Mm, okay. But that was for all the land around us. I know, I like Everything all these trees. All cut down, be his land. And you did horribly on that test, so uh, next place we go, please pay more attention. <laughs> yes, teacher. What is this place? The Sonic Hall. 
Is this a college? Is this no, a place no. for people who do like a council? It's a, it's, a <coughs> it's a club for what? The Masons. <coughs> what? The Masons. With the Masons. It's a club. Can I just uh, ask? Yes. It's not a church. It's not a college. Is it for the council? I'm just not. It's understanding what's it for. It's the ultimate boys club. Yeah. Mm. Um, I mean, nowadays they do an awful amount of charity work, mm -hmm. which they don't bang a drum about. If you look at the air ambulances, a lot of them have got a very small sticker on, mm -hmm. funded by the Masons. So they do it a lot in society these days. They just don't push yourself forward for it. Mm -hmm. You might have heard about it. It's called the Lease Lend Act. Have you heard of that, sir? The Lease Lend Act. I did, yeah. Right. Well, well, what it is, is this. Yeah. In 1939, yeah. as your man the history of Victoria, which I should tell you, this country went to war with Germany, 1939, the Second World War, okay? Um, everything that we wanted to survive, okay, we had to buy from America. So what was set up by Churchill and Roosevelt, Churchill for this country, Roosevelt from the Americans, was the least in the pact, okay? Fine. The lease is all the stuff that we need, the food, the nappy pins, the Sherman tanks, the whatever we could make it with. Okay? Now you store that little bit of information, you then walk up, you get into your time machine, remember, it's 1939 now, and you fast forward to 1971. What happened in 1971? Decimalisation. All the decimal coins that you've got in your purse and your mum and these ladies and gentlemen, okay, that came in as what you in 1971. What are we going to do with all of this? And I'm not exaggerating the quantity, but there was tons of it, tons of use. You put them all together and they're like that more gold. Well, you see, you're not so far off. You've got a good head on you. <laughs> right, I'm going to tell you, okay? And really, there was all this money lying about. You couldn't do a thing with it, okay? So what they did in 1972, 73, they took, extracted all of the copper out of that. They added it to all the silver that belonged to that, plus the gold. And the amount of money they raised out of all of that pure metal was so huge it helped to pay off three quarters of the least lend pact of the Second World War. Wow. And you are talking huge sums of money. And I mean huge sums. It was actually debt, wasn't it? It was. And it's only in the last two years that we've finished the debt for the Second World War. Is that right? That is true. Perfectly true. You are brilliant. And look, remember 1914 was the first World War. Okay, that was only paid off 10 years ago. What? Mm -hmm. Wars are expensive things, mm -hmm. okay? But that was the beauty of our forefathers making the money out of pure metal. That's right, and that's what we did. Your face. <laughs> Oh, please! Ooh. It was bad. So that would have been the background? That would have been your old uh, the studio where they'd have taken those different... Mm. That and background? that's his camera right there. There's a few different ones. You can see there's one there and there's one oh, there's there. There's a few different ones. It's more than one. Never used one like that. Mm -hmm. And you can develop that. Oh, okay. Through in that room there. All black and white. The, the one with the red light through there, that's where you develop the film. Yeah. Oh, and looks, they're all here. This one here, yeah, yeah. I wonder which one's the most creepiest. Well, I think it's that one. So, you know, you weren't allowed to smile. Well, you weren't supposed to smile in photographs. Like in passports. Do you, know, do you know why? Why? 
because it's not because it's not because of passports. It's because um, you know, before the photograph, obviously, if you wanted a photo, if you wanted a, a picture of yourself, you had to have it painted. And it was very hard to keep smiling the whole time it was being painted. So everyone got used to just looking straight faced. Uh, and the early cameras um, were. It didn't take forever, but you had to keep them open for quite a bit before you closed them, so okay. that the picture would be taken. And uh, it was just so if you kept your, kept your face straight, you could keep going. Whereas if you smiled and you'd then stop smiling, it would look very strange on the photograph. Because of exposure. They just look so unhappy. What? Yeah. You can tell the family, but you can't tell like if they're a happy family. What's that one? It's a tartan ribbon. It's the world's first colour photograph. Yeah. And he used two, three separate plates. Um, a red one, a, a blue one and a green one. And then put them together and make the first one. That's why it didn't make sense to me why it was coloured. Where all the rest are like black and white. Because it's such a simple, I mean it's a simple thing to take. What it was is, um, it was glass plates with different coloured filters on. Mm -hmm. So, they let so he had like a red, blue and green filter and then he combined the three images and produced a print from it. You probably couldn't do it with the other thing. I guess, so it yeah. and this is the world's first photograph, or permanent photograph I should say. Mm. Uh, what 18, is it? 1826. It's a view from a window at Le Grave, just outside Paris. It's a view of the, ro the rooftops. From Paris? <clears throat> yeah. And exposure, get this, exposure was about eight hours, at least eight hours, although some people suggest it could be in several days. Mm -hmm. so that's why I was telling her that that's why people don't smile in photographs from back then, because it took so long to take the photograph. It took you at could, least a few minutes. You, you had to keep you, smiling grimace, the whole time, grimace. which it just wasn't easy, so they just went... Twelve oh, years later, look how things have improved. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is the Boulevard de Temple in Paris in 1838. Are a lot of these photos from Paris or just... Not the one, no. no. <laughs> the, the I think ones. a lot of the, the people that were developing photography, you know, it was a big thing sort of in, in France. The exposure time had gone from sort of 8 hours plus mm -hmm. to 10 minutes. 10 minutes, yeah. And that's in 12, in 12 years. So but 10 minutes is still a long time to have to smile for. Yeah. <laughs> But this has the <clears throat> this has the honour of being the first photograph which contains human being. Where? Human beings. Yes. Yes. Uh, in this corner, there's a shoe shiner and his customer. Yeah. Now the exposure time being ten minutes, this was probably quite a busy thoroughfare. Mm -hmm. It was probably. But sort they of, were the only ones that were. But kind because of... other people were moving around so fast, they weren't caught. These are the people that were stationary. Lucky, lucky, shiner. lucky. Stationary long enough. Yeah. Ah, there you go. And mm -hmm. the thing is, nobody ever knew. No, the names of these people, no. these anonymous people, and yet they have the honour of being the first people in, in photograph. I bet if they just came here, they wouldn't even recognise themselves. <laughs> but uh, the Grand Duchess Anastasia, there, bless her, she, uh, yeah, she is captured on film. When was it taken? 1914. 1914. So that's like. Kind of like before she died, maybe. That was well, yeah, three, three years. About three years yeah. before she it was died. 1917 that the, the revolution happened. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. She was the one that they thought had escaped, you know, or the yeah. Because a lady turned up in the New York, I think, in the 1920s, claiming to be claim, claim, the, claiming to be the Grand Duchess. Some people, uh, quite famous people, backed her claims. You know, um, you know, they, they interrogated her. She seemed to know an awful lot. She was very good, whoever she was. But a lot of people said no. no. Um, although, so it was quite until relatively recently, it was quite a sort of mystery as to whether or not she had survived. <laughs> if she's dead, her body's still missing. Well, you no, know, because they found the bodies down a well. They thrown they, after they killed them. <clears throat> they taken them out into a forest. They killed them, and I think they put the, the corpses down a well. And it was only relatively recently, I think, well, I think probably last 50, 10, 15 yeah, years ago, they actually found the bodies, and um, she was amongst them. You know, they sort of caught, counted them. They found all four, because there was a mother and there was four kids. And, and the father. And the, I thought the father lived longer. Oh, the father he lives longer. Was it, was it the four girls? Was it four girls? It was and, and, and four girls and then there was Alexia. Yes, Yeah. I remember watching the movie. <laughs> that's all. That's all. Yeah, yeah. I there she is, so bless her. 
It's really, I mean, I like it. It's a lovely, yeah, you know, like you know, just because it's a story lovely. behind it, but it's a sad story, really. But that is history made there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. The first prince is taking a photo of herself. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah. You know? And photography was seen as a good a good hobby for sort of young women, you know. Um, we've got books here that sort of with the lady on the front, you know. So obviously they're thinking this is going to be a, a great hobby for, for for women. It was something that was approved of for women. Yes, and not um, many things were. So if, you, if you've got the money to buy yourself a little camera, you know, mm -hmm. and it would be the rich and the, or the upper middle classes mm -hmm. that would be buying sort of... A, I wish this was a better thing. You've got these sort of little cameras, box brownie type things. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still shocked. That's if Anastasia. You, yeah, if you've got the money to have one of those, you see, you know, this is a, you know, she is obviously the sort of people. Person. Royalty. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was an excellent hobby for her. <laughs> but if she was still alive, we would have known that. Yeah. <laughs> it's very sad. It is. It is. And I'd love to know who this was. Yeah, because <laughs> one is a ghost and two sister. One got and moved. So it just looks like a, a, you know, a white blur. <laughs> well, that's a mirror for you. <laughs> <laughs> Still blown away. Yeah. See, you wouldn't have found that if you just walked by places, wouldn't you? You're okay. learning stuff because okay. you're listening. I do listen to you, I just don't judge. No, no, what you is, win. You're not listening to me, you're listening to other people. Sandwiches. Far too many oh my goodness, she made a lot. Yeah, we'll be having so, probably these tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we just finished having our break in the car. Now we're going to go to the left and see what's down here. All right, then, would you all accompany me over here, please? He <laughs> gets lost every time. <laughs> we're going in the mine for a little tour. Well, good afternoon, yeah, folks, and welcome to the Mahogany Drift Mine. Now, a drift mine is a coal mine which has been tunnelled into a hillside at the slope, just like you can see in front of you here, and so called because it follows the drift of the seal of coal into the earth. Now, this coal mine hasn't been recreated. It's been here since the year 1855, and the museum's been built around it. Now, originally, it went a mile and a half in that direction to the south, and it drifted down 380 feet over the course of that mile and a half. It also extended over a mile to the west towards Stanley and a similar distance east towards Chesterly Street, so it was about four to five square miles in extent on the ground. And this is what it looked like. A network of pathways and roadways intersecting large pillars of coal left in place to support the roof. Now that's an old-fashioned method of coal mining. It's called board and wall, as it says there, also known as pillar and stall, whereby the miners are hewing the coal in stalls and pillars of coal are left behind to hold the roof up. Now the men worked at the coal face in the year 1913, which is the year we demonstrate, you had to be 21 years old before you could become a hewer. But before that you would have been a putter. From the age of 16 you pushed the full tubs of coal away from the coal face and kept the hewer supplied with empty tubs. Those tubs full of coal weighed half a ton. Heavy work. So hats on, heads down, follow me folks, thank you. <laughs> You're so tall, it's the duck. I don't have to duck at all. You do, you do, you do, you do. <laughs> a little bit. And all he's got when he's doing that job is this light for company. So I'm going to switch the activity off briefly so you can see what that would have looked like. Oh. Now imagine doing an eight hour shift. Now you might be lying on the ground for the best part of that eight hours. Probably in several inches of ice cold filthy water in a cool seam that's ripping the flesh from your back in the dimmest possible light. Now they are horrible working conditions. And if you're wondering how anybody could willingly do such a job, well, the answer to that is somebody had to do it. Because if there hadn't begun mining coal in County Durham centuries ago, you wouldn't have had the Industrial Revolution and you wouldn't have had any of the industrial progress which has followed the mining of coal. But of course, that's not the reason why men and boys came down holes in the ground to dig this stuff out. They did it because they got paid, of course. <coughs> Excuse me. And for every one of those tubs they filled in 1913, they got paid two and a half pence. That gave them a weekly <laughs> wage of around 175 to £1.80 on average, which doesn't sound very much for a week's very hard work from today's perspective, but in 1913 that actually was a good wage. Brian, yes. would you work as a mine? <laughs> no. No? Well, if 
back then I probably wouldn't have had much of a choice, it would have been a good paying job, but these days no. I wouldn't go in there to risk I wouldn't go in there to risk my life. Well, you didn't risk your life. Not really, not really. Yes, there was death, but there was death in every job back then. We could probably be a maid. <laughs> Is that a real cat? It is. Okay. <laughs> like Sophia. Do you want to try? No. Way too fun watching this. <laughs> And okay, get, re get ready, get ready. It's okay. Okay, so three, two, one, go. Oh, I missed. Mm -hmm. Seriously? Three, two, one, go. Oh, 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 oh! I got it. Okay. One more? You just gotta let it go fast. One more? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Ah! Oh, shorter, but that's fast. Whole pizza to myself. Mm -hmm. You get one, yeah. that's nice. I wasn't expecting that, I thought we were just all gonna share. No? No. Okay. Well, that'll fill me up. Wait, so if we're having pizza, what are you two having? I don't know, quiche, quiche, Okay. Sorted. Sorted. Full tank. Good. Is it petrol or gas? What? Petrol or diesel? Diesel, whatever. It's petrol. Petrol. <laughs> I don't drive, you do. Just before you get back for cheesecake. You have to cheesecake. That one, yours? Oh. I'm done. Just <laughs> <smell> <laughs> I'll let you head to bed. Okay, love you. Love you too. Night. Bye. That's my mum. I'm just gonna ring her since Brian got to speak to her mum. I spoke to my mum. Let's see what's up. I'm gonna get said. I'm heading back tomorrow. That'll be fun. Brian's first driving for long distance. He's a very well. He's a good driver, and I will never drive. So I'm so glad I'm with him. He can drive. Uh, I'm gonna head to bed now. This is the end of the vlog. Thank you for watching. Us going to Beamish and meeting Gateshead. It's been good meeting Ryan's whole family. Um, give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe. It's in danger, Debs. The opposite of danger. Good night.